You're listening to another ambitious entrepreneur network.com podcast, the voice for entrepreneurs and small business. Now onto the show. Welcome to the Christian Entrepreneurs Podcast, daily conversations with Christian entrepreneurs to inspire and empower Christian business owners to walk strongly in their faith while build a thriving business that honors him in every way. Now over to your host. And Marie Cross. And welcome to another episode of the Christian Entrepreneurs Podcast. This is episode 70, and I'm your host, Anne Marie Cross, the podcasting queen. Now, my guest today says it's how we let our crosses mold us that matters and joining me on the show today is Tasha Witt. Tasha is a wife and she's also a stay-at-home mom and she's got a degree in special education and a huge heart for kids especially children who just need love. She never really had a desire to be an entrepreneur until she was introduced to network marketing which she did for some time until realizing that she was hiding behind it and God had different plans for her. Now Tasha recently stepped down from network marketing and with God's help is now navigating the path that he is leading her down and she is a writer she loves to share her message through live videos and Tasha's hope is in sharing is that in sharing her content and her message is that she nudges other women other women who love her wants to step out in courage and be the chosen light that God is calling them to be now on today's show Tasha's going to share due to her infertility she learned to accept that she's not in control at all and she just learned to trust that God had a plan and that God's plan was good for her. She also had to let go of perfection. I think all of us can relate to that after joining a network marketing company that she's no longer with. She realized how confused she was in her roles and a lot of pressure was put on her. So she wants to share that journey and insights as well. And she discovered that she was hiding behind network marketing because she didn't want to step out on her own. Uh, that God is navigating and nudging her forward and giving her the strength and courage and so much more. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. You are so, so welcome. You know, I I really want to thank you for the transparency and honesty because I think so many women, um, you know, they, they struggle with stepping out. They struggle with something that's been placed in their heart. Maybe um, it's been a while that they've had this little niggling thought, I would love to do this and this, but for, for reasons only known to them, um, they haven't really stepped out and f- fulfill that. And often, you know, that is a calling, that is a, a, a mission um, you know, a journey that God wants us to, to step forward into because our experiences and the journeys that we have had in our life and the strengths that we've, you know, been given through his, his word and, 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 of course, through his strength, we now can impart on others who are going through similar seasons. So I just want mm-hmm. to, to thank you and, and honour you for that. Take us back, if you will, to the time where you were in the network marketing and things were happening that, you know, had you question, am I really in the right place? What were some of the things that you did to help you come to that decision? And why I ask that is that someone listening today may be in the same opportunity. There may be something that's going on, a project that they've said yes to, but really it doesn't feel right, but they they remain there anyway and they need a little bit more insights to help them stand up courageously and say, you know what, this is not an opportunity for me. Take us back to that. What, what happened for you? Yeah. So when, when I first joined network marketing, I loved it. I enjoyed the atmosphere. I enjoyed the team. Um, and even when I left, I loved the people and I still, you know, encourage if someone loves network marketing, I encourage them to be a part of a company they're passionate about. Mm -hmm. But for me, as I went As I got further into it, um, the excitement left and I started to feel more anxious and I allowed it to, I sort of felt like maybe that if I wasn't doing business building activities all day, every day, that I wasn't 
moving my business forward. Mm -hmm. And so getting caught up in watching others ahead of me and just feeling overwhelmed with all of the things that are required um, and feeling the pressure of deadlines, things like that just started I started to pull back and I realized that those things were not of God, because if you're in the thing that he wants you to be in, you're going to enjoy it. It may be stressful and it may be frustrating at times, but at the end of the day, you're going to have a passion and a drive to do that thing that he's called you to do. Mm -hmm. And so that was the biggest indicator for me. And I just really began praying and just digging in God's word and through also reading just personal development books and just diligently seeking like what, where is it that you want me to be? Mm-hmm. Um, he finally just released me from that. And I, I knew that I was letting fear uh, hold on to me more than just letting my faith drive me. Yeah, I love that. And, you know, often when we are in situations like that, it's important for us to lean into him, his words, to bring that to, you know, to prayer, to commit it to prayer and take the time to do that. But isn't it interesting that when we are in a situation and we're not comfortable with something and we're not confident in in ourselves in that area, we tend to look at what other people are doing and that Mm. reinforces the insecurity and the doubt and the anxiousness because we start to measure ourselves against what other Mm. people are doing and I think that is one of the biggest whales to derail us even if we are Mm. now walking the path and on the journey of which we are to travel because I think each and I'd love you to speak to this because I think now that you have found where your calling is and you're developing your strengths in that area it feels so much different I'm sure but what happens Mm. when you compare when you would look at other writers and what they're doing they don't have your background. They don't have your skills. They're not being developed in areas that God is developing you and the message that he's mm-hmm. creating in, in you. We have to be mindful to, to focus just on what we're doing. Have you found that true? And tell us, what, what's the difference? Tell us first, what's the difference now that you're creating your own path and in, in following your own um, you know, writing? What's the difference mm-hmm. in, in your day and energy? It must be significantly different, yes? Yeah? It is. It is. One thing that I didn't mention earlier is I'm naturally a people pleaser. Maybe all of us are to some degree. I'm not sure, Mm -hmm. but not having anyone to, uh, in network marketing, you kind of rely on each other for success Mm -hmm. in, in, to a certain degree. And so feeling, I don't have that pressure of feeling like I'm, um, um, contributing or not contributing to someone else's success Mm -hmm. so I love not having that pressure and you know just because I have a peace now about what I'm doing and and I'm very confident in the place that I'm at Mm -hmm. I don't feel rushed and I I guess I'm just I'm more aware I'm right where God wants me and I'm okay with that Mm. and I know that it's a process and that he's growing me and that he will give me the pieces I need as I continue to grow and go down this path Um, and I think just that piece really is uh, is why I don't compare myself now Um, I can look at another writer in my niche and um really just feel excitement or uh, like I like to learn from them. I don't feel Mm -hmm. any type of pressure or I don't feel like I'm comparing myself. Yeah, that is such a powerful lesson that you're sharing. And and I think for many of us, Tasha, when we don't, when we don't realize that the information that we are allowing to impact us, what we're listening to, what we're observing, uh, it's really detracting from what we should be focusing on and what we should be developing in ourselves. And I think it all has to do with our identity, isn't it? And I know lessons for myself. When I was, I've always loved business, even as a youngster, and I've shared on a story, I won't go into it again, but even from a youngster, um, even a young teenager, you know, we grew up on a farm and my parents always encouraged me to to get jobs and, and do things to earn, to earn an income, to be able to afford and pay for my horse, things like that. So I always had an mm-hmm. entrepreneurial mindset. So for me, my identity and success and significance was really on the outcomes that I was generating and the impact and that kind of thing. And so, you know, that's an external thing, but it's kind of like when I was reminded and really um, can say with with such certainty that my identity is not what's happening out there, not what people are Mm. saying, not what I'm achieving, but who God says I am. 
and that is enough that everything yes. from that and there's this peace but such mm. confidence not arrogance but a confidence that no matter what happens it's you know it, it's all right we can just we can continue to go forward from here and i mm. think and we don't get distracted do we we mm. don't um, look at what other people are doing and feel less than, or even the imposter syndrome, which I know so many women, who am I? Who are you not to? You know, whatever mm. you are sharing, your message, your smile, your laughter, your, you know, your hug or whatever it is you're spending time with someone it has the potential to impact and make a huge difference. So we should never minimize yes. who we are because we may all be made in God's image. So um, we can yes. celebrate that as, as well. Share a little bit, if you would, because, you know, your journey, and I think for, for many women who can relate, you know, around uh, battle with infertility, there must have been so much um, strength that you've gotten, you know, in, in your life through him, because, you know, share a bit more of that, because I'm sure people listening and, and watching even the recording can really um, be lifted up for, by hearing your testimony. Yeah. So um, my son is about 16 months now, and it took us about two and a half years to uh, for us to get pregnant. And God actually laid it on my heart. I, I didn't really see myself having children, um, which is kind of strange because I've always loved them, but I just, I don't know. I just couldn't see myself having kids. And one morning I was doing Bible study and it just hit me like a ton of bricks. I just, he was like, you've got to start growing your family. I just knew it was, you know, it was time. And so I talked to my husband and there was no like questioning. It's just like, okay. So that was confirmation too. And so since I felt such a heavy burden for that, that morning, I thought this is going to happen in mm. a couple of weeks. <laughs> and then, you know, I found out that I had some health problems and, um, he really just took me on a journey with that to teach me that I'm not in control. Mm. And also I mentioned that I was a people pleaser and uh, a perfectionist. And he, he just took all of that away through my infertility journey, teaching me that he's in control and that um, I, I, I don't really know how to put it into words, really. He just, he just completely transformed my mind, really, through, through that journey mm. um, and, and learning to trust him without knowing the outcome for mm -hmm. sure. Because at the end of the day, he knows exactly what we need and he'll give us exactly what we need at the right time. Yes. And now, of course, your, your son, uh, how old did you say? Two, two and a half? Yeah. He's six, he'll be 16 months on Friday. Wow. 16 months on Friday. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a brilliant <laughs> age, isn't it? Because as they start to get older, the things that they're learning and, and the milestones along the way are just incredible. But you're absolutely right. And I think, you know, sometimes the situations that we are in, whilst the struggle is just so it's more than, you know, we can bear often knowing that we have the strength through him and leaning in the word praying it is often, as you said, we're build, he's building in us the, the, the trust and the faith, our faith. And then once we've got through that, we, we're, we're strengthening through that. And then a lot of those, you know, the, the unhelpful beliefs and things that the stories that we're telling ourselves, which are absolutely lies, aren't they? The enemy is sharing mm. lies with us. We're able to eliminate that and turn to him. And when we have that in his timing, things will be sorted and I think that can only come um, through having um, the ability to surrender and, and then mm -hmm. as you're growing through that, you know, getting to the end of that and having absolute peace um, mm -hmm. no matter what, what the situation. Uh, and it's interesting, isn't it, when you look back, um, uh, you know, I've had situations and failures and things like that. And when I look back at them, I think, you know, even though at that time it was the worst situation that I could possibly have been in at that time, I can now say without a shadow of a doubt, it was actually the best because what I have learned and I have grown and, mm. um, and, and now the, the, the assuredness that you have, um, yeah, is just wonderful. It, would, would you say that yeah. true now? 
Oh yeah. 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 I, I say a lot that, um, there's purpose to your pain. Yes. There's something good that's going to come out of it, no matter what it is. I yeah. truly believe there's always good to come out of it. Yeah. And I think, you know, I, I don't know what stories you're sharing. I think writing is one of the, and do you write with pen and paper or are you an electronic writer or a little bit of both? A little bit of both. I, bit of both. I, I journal some, like mm. that's just more, um, just for more for myself to kind of get my thoughts out. And then the other stuff's like through blogging and email and social media and that kind of thing. Yeah. What's well, really interesting, I think, and I've, I've you know spoken to a number of writers and authors and I've seen this happening, you know, the journey of healing and, and being able to share insights can sometimes be such a gift and a blessing to others that sometimes it's in the sharing and the raw moments that people can understand that, oh, I'm not the only one that is struggling through, you know, through that. Mm -hmm. And I think absolutely, you know, the and, and I, I think I've heard someone else said, you know, our mess, our messes can ultimately become our message that we impart mm. to the world when, you know, when we've worked through that. And it can because, you know, we, we often look at ourselves and our situation and think that we're the only people that are struggling through it. And sometimes, again, the enemy brings shame and guilt and doubt and all of that, which, again, is all lies as well. Um, but it's, you know, incredible to be able to, to now share that story. Share, if you will, with, um, with us you know, the writing process, because there may be people today that are thinking, you know, I'd love to do something like that too, about writing. And then ultimately you, you'll, you may decide that you're going to write a book or whatever it is, the, 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 the uh, options and things like that are, are endless. It just depends on what you decide mm. through prayer that uh, the path for you, but what's your writing process? Because obviously you've got a little one too, so there's juggling, but what does your no, yeah. typical day look like for you? Well, he, he has a nap once a day that's a couple hours long. So I usually will write during that time. Yes. Um, and when you ask about the process, are you meaning more like, like what I do throughout yes, what you the do. writing, yeah. the process? Usually I will, I pray on it and ask God if there's something like, what should I share today? And sometimes things will come to me and sometimes it's harder. And I think there's, days where we all lack inspiration and <laughs> content and we have to really think harder on it but I, I, I think back at like my infertility journey and and the things that I felt through different experiences and I usually will try to share a little bit of my story in some way first mm. to help people relate to what I'm about to say yeah. And then I will go into kind of the meat of like what I want them to get from my story or the lesson from my story. Yes. And do you find, and, and this fascinates me, I love, you know, um, I, I love finding out how people actually do their work. You know, the behind the scenes where, the, where you have, uh, you know, documentaries. I love the behind the scenes <laughs> rather than the, the front of, of scene because you get to know how people um, do things. And I, I find that fascinating. But I think it's also important too because there may be people who are thinking about, I'd love to put pen to paper or fingertips to keyboards um, to be able to share that, that message have you found too when you do um, bring it to prayer that you write something and then you'll go back and reread it and you'll think where did that come from and have you found mm -hmm. that to be true too I have I have yes yeah. <laughs> it's a process isn't it with writing because you know sometimes when we are looking at a blank piece of paper or at the screen that perfectionist can sometimes come forward and say it has to be perfect. Do you go through a process where you kind of put your, your thoughts down and then you go back and you edit? And it's far easier to edit after you've got content there than starting to have it perfect from scratch. How, do you find that true? And, and, and do you have a process around that? Yes, I just, I just write, like basically what you just said, I write and then I go back and edit. I found myself wanting to edit as I was going through it. And that made it take way too long to write something. Mm -hmm. And it also, uh, it would cause me really not to even get it complete when I wanted to, because I was just too caught up in everything being so, so, um, so yes, I definitely just write it all out and then I go back and look. Um, yeah. And usually when I do that, I find that I'm pretty content with how it is. I may change a word or two, but it mm -hmm. usually flows fine when I just let my thoughts go. 
Yeah. And, and of course, you've got a blog and we'll share with everyone how people can get access to that. And I think that's how I actually found you because there were a few blog posts that I read and I really could sense that, you know, you were just with transparency and authenticity and, and real, you know, that you were there. Um, mm-hmm. You know, sometimes you read things and there is a bit of disconnect there, but that it was really raw and real and, and really emotive. And so, you know, that's why I reached out to you. And so that blog post, share a little bit more because for some people listening and watching today, I mean, a blog is an incredible way to build engagement with an audience that just continues to grow. So take us on that journey. I mean, how often do you blog and, and are you really starting to get now um, people feedback from, from the content you're sharing? Because I'm sure you're impacting a lot of people who have been and maybe are still struggling with what you've gone through. Yeah. So with the blog right now, I'm just blogging once a week. And then I've started here just recently doing one email a week. I'm just kind of slowly adding things uh, because I do stay at home with my son and Mm. and he is my first priority throughout the day. So I don't want to add too much to my plate. So once a week right now, and usually people will respond through email I find people like to keep their comments more private. And so they'll Mm -hmm. respond through email um, and they'll share their stories with me, how it relates to the blog posts that I've shared and um, how they, they like to know that someone else has gone through something similar. And I like to share that and help people to have courage and not feel alone in the things that they face. Yeah. You know, the, um, what you're sharing is just so powerful because how often, do we look at the Instagram posts and we see a beautiful house with all, all organized and everything, you know, the baby <laughs> is looking all, you know, t- tip top. And we look at our, <laughs> our, our clutter and our, you know, disorganization. And so often we can assume that we're not good enough because we haven't got it all together. But when we strip away all of the filters and all of the, you know, that, we realize that, you know what, there are times we all struggle. However, what's important is to realize that, we'll realize that everything will be okay. And, uh, you know, mm. I think um, to be a parent today, I mean, my youngest is 22. We didn't even have devices back then. That's kind of showing my age. But to think now, <laughs> I mean, it's challenging for, for mums and especially to do yeah. it all. And I love that you said my child is my first priority and when you Mm -hmm. really make that commitment and have that intention everything else fits around that and no matter what anyone says no matter what comments you might read or whatever on going online we know that you know god's blessed us with children as parents they are our you know commitment and dedication towards raising the next generation and that um, opportunities as you can continue to grow will will certainly be there but mums I I was just sharing today you know mums so that mothers and millennials are a huge market um, you know and I think sharing your story that way you can grow an incredible community and really lead that you know be the voice uh, for mm. them, the hope and the inspiration and who knows um, what you can certainly do do you have ideas I mean it's okay if you say you know what I'm just blogging it at blogging and just getting it out there because it can that in itself that whole process of you still doing that I'm sure it still continues to allow you to develop and grow and heal mm-hmm. through that you know the other things that might come up for you have you found that too Oh, yes. Yes. It's definitely healing to to share. And I'm not doing a ton outside of the blogging and writing just yet. I I do have a goal to write a book at some point. Um, But I really just feel like I feel called like God's just saying, just write. Right now, I just want you to write. And so that's kind of where I am. And I'm just uh, I'm finding my voice through that and finding Mm -hmm. really what he wants me to share. Um, And I'm finding that it's getting easier. And that's why I just recently added the email to it because it's not, 
w- once you do it, it's just not as hard and you, you can start adding more to it. Yeah. And what I love about that too is that, you know, so often we can, yeah, it's important to have a vision. It's important to have a goal. But sometimes when we get so fixated on that, again, it's a control aspect, isn't it? It's saying, you know, mm-hmm. one day I would love to have that. But we need to then look at where are we now? What can we continue to do? And for you, it is writing. And there's a message in this for for others. It may not be writing, but it may be some stage we are at in our business. It's okay. You're developing skills. You're developing content. I mean, all this content, in my mind, is just going, all this content, you can do this, this, and this. (laughs) You'll have all of this content. You're, You're journaling your journey. You're building this community. And often the community will guide you too to what, you know, they may ask questions. So your little one's getting older now. How did you handle this? And you start to share that journey to the point that Mm. people, I can't wait for this week. This is when she's going to release another, you know, another (laughs) uh, blog post that will happen so that when you decide, you know what, now I'm going to package that and you don't have to write from scratch. You can take all Mm -hmm. of the thoughts that you've got on your blog and, and assemble them into a book. You've got already an audience who knows, mm-hmm. likes, and trusts you, and um, you're now building that momentum. So for someone listening or watching today, continue to hone your craft, continue mm-hmm. to build that momentum and that audience and the community because they mm-hmm. are the ones that um, whatever you launch down the track, write down the track or develop down the track are going to be the ones that put up their hand and say yes. We want to yes. more of that. So let's share with people who are listening and who are watching today, how can they access your blog and then read about your journey? My website is, is just my name. It's www.tashawet.com. And I have my about me section on there and I have my blog and I'll be adding some more things uh, later on down the road, but it is a slow process. So yeah. you can access my blog a there. steady process. With Steady, yes. and purpose, yes. as it does. Yes. The little one yes. who uh, <laughs> you're working around. Um, but uh, I love it. I just thank you so much for coming on the show. I know that, you know, the things that you've shared today, no matter what stage, it's so true, no matter what stage we are at in our business or whether whatever business we're in, whether it be network marketing, whether we are writers or bloggers, whether we're coaching <coughs> consultants or we offer products, no matter what stage, startup. 10 years, five years, no matter what level we're at, the things that you've discussed today are so important. And especially if we're Mm. kingdom, we want to create a kingdom business or a kingdom focused blog or whatever it is that um, to not try to be perfect, to not compare ourselves with others, to not try to be in control, but to, uh, to certainly lean in and um, yeah get your strength from him so thank you so much for coming on the show yes I've enjoyed it and I actually would like to share a quote just with us talking about the timing and and taking things steady I feel like this is perfect to share it's by Bill Mm Hybels and it says if the request is wrong God says no if the time is wrong God says slow If you are wrong, God says grow. But if the request is right, the timing is right, and you are right, God says go. Mm, I love that. I love that. Have you used that, referred to that one on your blog? Have you written about that already? I have referred to it, and I think it was on a social media post. Ah, That's a good (laughs) one. It really is a good one. One of the things that I'm doing at the end of each show, Tasha, is uh, just saying a word of prayer for uh, everyone. May I do that for you today? That would be great. I would appreciate that. Father God, thank you so much for the opportunity that we had today to speak to Tasha. You know, sometimes, Lord, when we hear someone's journey and testimony, we realize that, um, you know, we're going through something like that ourselves, that we're not alone. And also, too, that we have you as our comforter, as, you know, where we get our strength from when we lean in. Lord, you know, so often we like to have control of our lives, of our business, so much so that you say no. Uh, stop, you know, you need to lean into me because, uh, you know, the way that you're going is not the direction I have for you. So, Father, if someone is listening today, if someone is watching today, that can resonate. We just want to um, lift them up in prayer and ask for the strength through the Holy Spirit that they can 
lean back into you. Father, we just ask too for your continued blessing on Tasha, her husband, and her little one. Father, such a blessing that uh, she could be here on the show to share her testimony. Continue to bless her, bless her writing as she is continuing to develop her brand voice and her audience. May she continue through the message and the words that she shares uh, impact and really make a difference in the lives of uh, the women and the men too who are reading her her words and uh, gaining insights from uh, the wisdom that she's sharing. We ask this all in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for coming on the show and I uh, look forward to reading some more of your blogs coming up. I just love your writing style. So continue doing what you're doing because it really is making an impact. Thank you. I appreciate it. You've been listening to the Christian Entrepreneurs Podcast, brought to you by BeTheDifferenceMovement.com, changing the world one message at a time. Do you feel called to influence real change with your message? Join our supportive community of like-minded influencers, thought leaders, and disruptors at www.BeTheDifferenceMovement.com. That's BeTheDifferenceMovement.com.